Today I'm going to show you how to use bands for strength training to improve your PRs in the main lifts. So we get a lot of questions about bands and how to use them. Bands, chains, accommodating resistance for the main lifts, like the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, and the press. The bands were made popular by Westside Barbell and Louis Simmons really back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I just wanna show you how to set them up on a barbell and why we use them. So ultimately, a band is gonna to attach to the rack or to the floor or potentially to the top of the rack and then attach at the barbell, which means that as you move the weight through its range of motion, the actual force or the tension on the band will stretch and it will create more weight or more load or less load throughout the range of motion. Usually, most people are stronger at the top of a lift than they are at the bottom of a lift. So we can add bands to the barbell so that the bands are have less tension at the bottom, therefore they put less load on the bar, and as you press, the bands stretch out and they add more load to the bar. So it actually works the strength curve of the lifter. Another big advantage to bands is that they're cheap and they're easy to transport. So as opposed to chains, which are really heavy, these you can just throw in your gym bag. Because a bench press is so much closer to the base of the rack, the bands are too long. So for the bench press, we're typically gonna use double bands. And that's gonna look like this. When I attach the bands, I'm gonna put them on the edge of the collar and not on the barbell. And that will protect your bands. So the weights will slide on just outside the bands, like so. Many people put the bands on the barbell themselves, and when they do that, the neural can actually shred your bands, which is bad, or the bands can get caught between the barbell and the J-hook, and that will also cut your bands, and that's bad. So you'll notice in the setup that we have now, the bands are pulling the barbell forward. And that's okay, because I don't perform the bench press directly where the J cups are. I perform the bench press over the shoulder joint. And so I'm gonna line the bands up with the shoulder joint. And then you'll notice as she benches, the bands will straighten out and become more vertical, which is what I want. Fire up, that looks good. Tuck your elbows just a little bit more on the way down. Tuck and throw, nice vertical bands. Hold it, rack it, good job. So depending on your setup, the best option is to have a rack that has band pegs that you can use. And there's two options to do a doubled mini band. So the first option is just to use a single peg, put it on the single peg, the two ends of the band come up and around on the collar. That's one way to do this. Another way to do a doubled mini band is to take one end of the band, put it on each of the pins, and then take the middle and put it up on the collar. So that's another way to double your mini bands on a bench press. The question is, what happens if you don't have a rack that has band pegs like this? Well, you have two options. Option one is to actually take the bands, feed it underneath the horizontal piece of the rack, and bring it up and put it on the collars. We still have double mini bands on the bench press. The key is just to make sure that the bottom of these bands line up with each side so we're symmetrical in our pull. Option two is to use heavy dumbbells or something else heavy to attach the bands to on the floor and attach your bands that way. So these bands come in lots of different sizes. Most people just need these two. So we call this a mini band and it's about a half inch wide. And we call this a light band and it's slightly wider than one inch. So like 1.1 to 1.3. All the major equipment manufacturers make these, Rogue makes these, they're pretty cheap. But these are really probably the only two most people need. Mini bands, light bands. They get bigger and heavier than this. If you're a big time squatter or deadlifter, above 500, 600 pounds, you might need heavier bands. But for now, this is probably all you need. So first, let's talk about how to add bands to your squat. So this would be for squat. The first way we can do it is what we call straight bands, where we literally just take a band, we loop it over the pin, we don't do anything with it, we just put it on the collar. There's not gonna be a ton of tension here. And the shorter you are, the less tension there's gonna be. Somebody was six foot seven, it'd be a lot more tension. You'll notice that the bands will probably get somewhat slack at the bottom of a squat in this sort of position. So the second option, probably better than straight bands, is to choke our bands. So choked means it's choked around itself. So I can take two pins, I can loop 
get through itself and pull up and create some additional tension that way. And if I have multiple pins to get more tension, I could just spread the pins apart. So what if I don't have pins? Can I choke bands around a squat rack? Well, if you've bolted your squat rack to the floor, you can. If you haven't, bad idea. But mine's bolted down, plus I've got a thousand pounds of weight on the thing. So you can actually choke it around the horizontal piece. Now, if I do that, I'm gonna take the piece that's closest to the collar, which would be this end, and I'm gonna bring it up and put it on the collar like so. So now I've choked the band around the bottom of the rack. We can use bands more than just pulling down on the bar. We can actually use bands to pull up on the bar. That's what's called a reverse band. Now I'm gonna do a reverse mini band. So I'm actually gonna take the bands and throw it over the top of the rack, line it up about to where I would be when I squat and bring it down and put it on the collars. The thing you have to remember is that it's gonna pull the bar out of the collars. So you'll need a person to help hold down the barbell to keep it in place. So I can just put weight on the bar on reverse band and do my first set weighted since the bands are gonna deload the bar somewhat. How do we do reverse band for the bench press and the deadlift? It would be different than the double reverse mini bands that I did for the squat. I tend to like a light band choked over the top of the rack, just like so. I'm gonna pull through, through itself, just like I would choke it from the floor, but I'm gonna choke it from the top and put it down here on the collar so that I can bench press. And again, you'll need somebody to help hold on to the weight, just like, yep, just pull one through, perfect. And that would be a reverse band bench press. So this is a reverse band setup for the deadlift. So I usually use light bands from the top, choked down to the barbell. And of course you'll have to add weight to the barbell and you wouldn't start at 135 here. You'd probably start at 225 or higher. And what that's gonna do is the bands are pulled very, very tight at the floor. So it's gonna be lighter on the floor, heavier at the top. All right, so for the same reason that we have to make adjustments with using mini bands or light bands, straight bands versus choke bands versus double bands, based on what lift we're doing, like the squat and the bench press because of the different height of the bar compared to what you're attaching the bands to, the same is true for the deadlift because the deadlift is down here on the ground. The best way to do this is to actually spread the bands apart horizontally as far as we can. So we've actually put our band pegs in, attach mini bands, put it all the way across the rack. There's very little band tension at all right now, but as you set up your deadlift and pull, it will get tight in a hurry and will add a tremendous amount of load to the bar. Squeeze your chest up, drive through your feet. Boom, good. One more, chest up, drag. Excellent, perfect. So next time when your coach tells you to do a double reverse miniband squat, it's really like ordering a crazy Starbucks drink, but for powerlifters who are kind of white trashy, then you're gonna know what to do. For more great videos about how to increase your squat, your deadlift, your bench press, and your press, using all sorts of fun accessory movements, click the link right up here.